Hi, this is Mr. Jeffrey with the Achieve K-12 Online School. Here's a help video for Consumer Math Section 3, Part 1. This focuses on installment buying. You may have seen uh, plenty of commercials for things like this on TV and at stores, uh, especially rent -a center is a very popular nationwide one that, that it uses this kind of idea, where um, we're going to focus on then in this chapter knowing your total payment. So even though an item may be priced a certain amount, uh, that won't be the amount you actually pay for it because you're buying it in installments which is what we're talking about here so being able to figure out what is the total amount you'd actually pay for an item because it's not going to be the price listed as well as then calculating well what's the finance charge you're, you're buying the item for a set amount well how much above that amount then are you paying to actually purchase it in installments rather than just buying it straight out so that's what this uh, section's on and we'll have a couple examples and we'll we'll get right to it so here we have a common situation that we see um, at a place that would let you do installment buying. We have a washer and dryer combo here for sale for $698. We see that they're offering two choices here for us. We can either pay $82 a month for 12 months, or we can pay $50 down right now. So that means right now pay them $50, and then $74 a month for 12 months. We can see right offhand that the amount per month is less than the one that we pay the money down. So looking at it initially from the first month, well, if you did the first choice, the first month, you're going to pay $82. Whereas if we did the second choice, that first month, we're going to pay $50 plus $74. So it means more money in that first month. But that doesn't always necessarily mean because it's more money in the first month that it's not the better deal of the two. So what we're going to do now is take a look at both of these situations and see how much money we'll pay over the long run. Again, we're talking, we're focusing here on step one, which is just finding the total payment given these situations. Remember to find the total payment, we're going to take the number of months that we pay something on, and we're going to multiply it by the amount we pay per month. Well, then the difference between these two is, though, in one, we're going to have to then add in that total down payment. So let's get straight to it here. So example one here is $82 a month. So we're going to take 82, and we're going to multiply that times the number of months, which is 12. So $82 a month on our calculator times 12 months is $984. So in this first example, our total payment is $984. Remember, of course, that's more than the $698 that we started with, but that's because we're paying it off monthly and we have that finance charge. Well, in situation number two here, we have something similar, but instead of 82 a month, it's only 74 a month. It's still for 12 months, but then, of course, we have to add on in the end the $50 that we initially paid uh, when we first bought the item. So using our calculator again, we're going to get 74 for those 12 months, which is $888, but then adding in those $50 that we paid once at the very beginning, we get $900. $38. So we can see that even though we paid more in that first month, we ended up paying less over the course of the entire uh, loan. And we can calculate then how much less by subtracting these two numbers together. Well, we also want to figure out then the finance charge from this situation. So again, I referred to the amount of the wash and dryer was only 698 but we paid more than that. So let's find the finance charge here then for number one. For number one, we actually pay $984, but the item is only worth $698. This subtraction problem then, finding the difference between the two, will help us calculate our finance charge. So on this one, we will pay a finance charge of $286 over the course of all 12 months. Where in example two here, we're obviously going to have a lower amount because we're paying less over the course of the whole loan because we even with that fifty dollars added in because our, our rate each month was far less so we have 938 minus 698 again using our calculator to help us do some of that work we're going to end up with only two hundred and forty dollars so this time our finance charge is only two hundred and forty dollars where here it was two hundred and eighty six dollars so you can see that that's a difference of forty six dollars then uh, between these two plans so the upside and the downside is the second plan we have to pay more initially fifty dollars plus the seventy four dollars in the first month 
but that plan saves us $46 then over the course of the entire uh, loan. So here's the next situation we have. We go to another store, it might be a competing store next door, and we have the same washer and dryer combo that's up for sale for the same price, $698. But they're offering us a different option here, and this is a very common one that you'll see. I'm sure you've heard the term same as cash before somewhere. So this deal tells us 12 months same as cash. It says finance charges assessed from the date of purchase if not paid in full within 12 months. Then it lists the APR rate of 25%. So first, before we get into this, we have to kind of understand what's actually going on in this problem. Uh, 12 months same as cash tells us if we can pay $698 within 12 months after we purchase it, that's the amount we'll owe. In other words, they're giving us $698 for one year without any extra charges which is a pretty good deal if you can stick to a budget and you can pay it off in time. They don't care how much you pay each month, they just care that if at the end of the uh, end of the 12 months you've paid your full bill, which is a great deal again if you can stick to their budget. What they're kind of hoping you do, however, is you kind of put it off and you don't quite pay it all. Because what it says then is that our finance charges are assessed from the date of purchase and not paid in full. Meaning if you let 12 months and one day go by, they're going to hit you with a full 25% interest rate, not just on the amount that you have left, but on the amount that you owed in the first place. So that's really going to add on the money on top if you can't pay it off within those 12 months. So let's start to look at this again, keeping in mind our two things that we're looking at in this chapter, which is to in this section, which is total payment and then the finance charge as well. So let's take the first situation here where we uh, we pay it off before 12 months. Well, that, that's a pretty easy one to think about because we're not charged any finance rate if we pay it off in 12 months. So if we go for under 12 months, which is really what, what we're looking to do here if we take that option, we're only going to owe the amount of the washer and dryer to begin with. We only owe $698. Well, let's then think about what happens if it takes you longer than 12 months. Let's say it takes you into the 13th month, so you're a couple days late after the one year has expired. How much are you going to owe then? Well, we need to look at a formula that we have then for calculating the total payment, thinking about the interest that we're going to be charged. Here's, here's the formula. Let's look at it in terms of the formula here first. So we're looking at the interest, meaning how much extra we're charged over that price, plus then the original price of the washer and dryer. So that interest is that extra amount they're going to charge us. Well, how do we calculate that interest? Well, we're going to calculate it first. It's going to be based on the original price of the item. We're going to multiply that times the rate which is that APR rate is, is the rate that they're going to charge us for financing us the money. And we also have to then factor in the amount of time that's gone by because that rate will uh, increase based on the number of time that we have over the 12 months. Then we add that back to that original starting price. So all this here, the original price times the rate times time, is just used to factor then the amount of interest that we'll owe here. So let's use this formula then to uh, write a problem, an equation we can solve to find out then how much we'll owe if we're over 12 months. So we started off with $698 as the original price times by 25% APR. Remember when we put it in an, a problem, an equation to solve here, we want to write it as a decimal. So that's actually 0.25. Then we're going to multiply that by the amount of time. Remember, APR stands for annual percentage rate, annual meaning yearly. Since we've had this loan then essentially for one year, we're going to pay 25% uh, rate on this original amount. So here then is our formula for our interest. Then, of course, we have to add back the original amount of the original price. So this will find our interest, but then that's on top of the actual amount we owe, which was 698 to begin. Let's use our calculator to help us solve. We take the original amount, multiply by our interest rate, 0.25, and we're going to multiply that by 1. Of course, it remains the same, but that's simply because we've only had it for one year. 
Here then is our interest, $174.50. So that's our interest, $174.50. That's kind of telling us if we take longer than 12 months, we're going to owe an extra amount of money, $174. That's a lot of money to, to pay extra just because we didn't quite pay it off in 12 months. Of course, we add that back to our starting price of our washer and dryer combo. And we can find then that our total unit will cost us then $872.50 if we don't pay it off over time. So $852.50. So it's really important then in this case to pay it off within the 12 months or we're going to pay a lot more. So it's a better deal if you can hold yourself to it but the other ones at the other store may have been a better situation for you if you really need that monthly payment to stay on track so you don't end up costing yourself a lot more money in the end. So just some things to think about here from Section 3, Part 1. I hope you found the video helpful.